Good morning, Monday morning, heading now to Google Campus for Startups in Tel Aviv to speak at a meetup. My boy David Stark asked me to come speak about how to craft an elevator pitch for investors and then a workshop. So it's going to be a fantastic event. After that, heading to Seatree, a company you met a couple of episodes ago in the agriculture tech space, spending time there with the chairman, Barak Hachamov, to talk about launch, marketing, you know, my thing. It's going to be a fantastic day. Here we go. here in Tel Aviv. Made it to the Google for Startups campus, the new campus right there. Quite a location they have here. We're here bright and early. The event starts in like an hour. I'm gonna get some work done this morning. The most important part. Here are the big hot shots right here. The event is starting. I don't ask people when I put them on video. I just put them on video. Bye guys. Okay. More hot shots over here. Mass challenge. Tikla. Tikla's a regular on the vlog nowadays. All right, we're going up to the event. Cedric Bolag. Hello. The Swiss tech vlogger. <laughs> is he recording me recording myself? Because that's quite that's, meta. That's, that's how it's done these days. That is quite meta. Oh, if I was Gary Vaynerchuk, that's how it's done. Walk around with someone recording you. All right, what floor are we going to? All right, I think my talk starts in like eight minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Should probably uh, go upstairs. That's the mic that I'm using, by the way. That's giving me problems. What is Thank you to our hosts, Google Cloud for Startups. Woo. They're awesome. And make sure that you talk to them during the break. A little bit about me. So two years ago, I co-founded Ground Up Ventures with my partner, Corey, over there. Uh, we are a seed stage venture capital firm with offices in New York and Israel, investing in uh, early stage tech companies in both of those geographies. We've made eight investments so far. And over the course of this fund, we'll probably ramp that to about 25. So if you think that your company is potentially relevant for us, and know that we're already talking to some of you, um, definitely uh, reach out to us. One of the smartest VCs in Israel. For those of you who don't know, Hill Hold is uh, one of the leading startup advisors, bloggers, bloggers, startup nation, you know, ambassadors. Uh, he actually now is a, a published journalist who just started a weekly column in the Jerusalem Post, writing, featuring different startups. Um, and he's just an extremely helpful guy who does a lot of great things in the system uh, with no expectation of anything in return. But one of the other things is his, his real kind of professional past is as a marketer. Um, so he is an expert when it comes to messaging and crafting your pitch. So, hello. Thank you. So first of all, I gotta say this, and I literally am not just saying this because they're here. Take that deck that David's sending out and like study it for the next month. Because I was sitting here like I've never heard presentation about fundraising that was so jam-packed with information and like things that like I was sitting here nodding my head like yes send that introduction email like my god like, I've written articles about this and so just go over that deck it was gold that's number one number two I'm gonna do something that I've never done before never and I'm gonna start this talk with a little Torah is that okay we do that sure totally random this wasn't planned but like my rabbi said this this past Shabbat in shul I'm not even kidding so you'll just bear with me for a second all right so in this last week's Torah portion, I don't usually do this, but I'm not like, I'm not like this preacher, but in this last week's Torah portion, God says to Moses, go speak to Pharaoh and get the Jews out of Egypt, right? And you'd expect Moses to have one of many reactions, but his reaction is actually super weird. He says, but the Jews won't listen to me. But if you actually look, God didn't tell him to speak to the Jews. He said, go speak to Pharaoh. And he's like, but the Jews won't believe me. And you're like, we don't pay attention to it, but like, that's a really strange answer. Why do you gotta convince the Jews? It's Pharaoh, right? So he said in, in Shul this, this past Shabbat, he's like, the lesson here is actually really important. And I was, again, I was sitting in the, in the audience, I was like, yes, marketing. You gotta, you, gotta believe, you gotta believe in your cause. You gotta believe in it before you convince others. If the Jews themselves don't believe that they warrant, they, they merit getting out of Egypt, how are you gonna go convince Pharaoh? So he's like, I gotta convince the Jews first, that they believe that they deserve to get redeemed, to get out of here. 
they believe it, <laughs> then we can talk about marketing to Farrah, right? Which is a great segue to what we're talking about here. Um, and again, you know, so much of it, it was just gold, and a lot of what you said is maybe I'm expanding a little bit on it, but I like to say, as, as someone who sees a lot of entrepreneurs, anybody who tells you that there are rules to success and do this and you'll become the next Google, fire them. Just downright fire them. They're, they're lying, right? There's no rules. There are no rules. But there are rules that if you don't follow them, there's no chance of succeeding, right? You get that distinction? I'm not saying if you do these things, you'll be the next Google, but if you don't do these things, you definitely will not be the next Google. And, you know, again, this is just something that kind of I, I've, I've formalized, over, formalized over the years after meeting all these entrepreneurs. I find myself saying the same thing over and over again, so I kind of gave them names. So humor me a little bit. Uh, and you've heard, anybody who's met with me has heard these two rules, but. Um, so the first one, first rule I call the home run rule, right? Figure out your home run. And this very much, you know, relates to everything David said before. You gotta get into the mindset of an investor, okay? You know what, actually I wanna give one sentence before that. that. That was a little bit of an intimidating presentation for us entrepreneurs, like, oh my God, I have to do all these things? You have to understand one thing, and this is actually true not only for investors, but journalists and marketing in general. Just like you need David's money, he needs your deal. This should be very clear. Investors, like a journalist, right? You know, I pitch TechCrunch. They write a story. I'm like, guys, thank you so much. They're like, thank you. And I'm like, why are they thanking me? And I realize these guys, you know, it's their job to write stories. You give them a good story, they're happy. You need them just like they need you. Same thing with an investor. If an investor doesn't have deals, right, they are going home. So that's, first of all, the mindset. You know, on the one hand, yes, follow all those rules. But on the other hand, don't let it intimidate. You no, know, come with confidence that if you truly believe in what you're building, and we'll get to that in a second, but he needs you just like you need him. That's really, really important. Now, the home run rule. What is the home run rule? If I come to an investor and I show him my app, or her my app, and they begin to drool because it is the most beautiful product they've ever seen. Boom, you got a home run. Now the investor's gonna under try to understand, you know, what's your go to market, how you're gonna monetize, how much money do you need from me, et cetera, et cetera. But first you got their attention. You have a home run of a product, right? Let's say you show them their product, your product, and they're like, this looks like garbage, right? Say, so yeah, but I launched it last week and like 150,000 daily users. Right? Now your product market figure, traction is your home run. Right? Let's say I show them my product and it looks like garbage and I have 10 users. Yeah, but the guy who built Gmail joined my team. Now my team is my home run. Right? And if I have a garbage product, no traction, no team, but Eric Schmidt invested in my startup, now my investors are my home run. Something needs to be a home run. You come to an investor, any investor, and again, this very much applies to all marketing, not just investment. You come to any person, you try to sell them, and whatever you're trying to sell them, and you have three triples, no one is taking out a checkbook for three triples. Why? Why? What's the fundamental principle here? How do you raise money? And again, David said this in the presentation, four letters. The entire world of fundraising, four letters. Who's paying attention? FOMO. It's all about FOMO. That's, your, your entire job is pitching FOMO for those that don't know, fear of missing out. Your entire job as, fun, as a person who's fundraising is create FOMO. If I come to an investor and I show them the most beautiful thing or the most amazing team, they're like, all right, I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Remember, they need you just like you need them. If they're afraid you're gonna leave this meeting, go to their competitor and raise capital, that's when you get their engines running. But if they feel like, okay, it's an okay product, it's an okay team, okay traction, it's okay. Nobody's writing a check for okay. Why? FOMO, but more than that. Again, get into the mindset of an investor. An investor has 100% capital, okay? They have their money. Now, we all look, we talk about fundraising for startups. You think it's hard to raise $20 million? Go try raising $150 million from investors that want to see their return. Remember, these guys are also fundraising. Their mindset is we need to return our money to our investors. 100% of their capital, I'd say 95 to 98, depends on who they are, percent of that capital is going to the wing. They'll never see it again. 2% or 5% is returning their whole fund, ideally, right? I mean, obviously, this is not an example you can learn something from, but you know, when Sequoia invested in, in, in uh, WhatsApp, I think it was a $50 million round, somebody correct me, I think they cashed out at $3 billion. That, you know, that's kind of the mindset of an investor. We want to return our entire fund. Your job is to convince that investor in that X amount of time that you have that you're a two percenter. They're not investing in somebody that they don't think will return their entire fund. Now, in order to convince someone, you got to believe yourself that you're a two percenter. For that, you need a home run. You can't have everything's just good. Something has to be a wow moment. It ha you you got to have something that's just, right? Not be triples. So home run rule, and this is before that meeting. Don't go to that meeting saying, okay, well, we have good, figure out your home run before. And if you don't have a home run, then wait. You gotta have a home run. That's rule number one. We'll get to the pitch in a second. Rule number two, and this is, quantify this, guys. Like, actually test this thing, okay? This is like a theory that like, I, I've actually quantified. You have 10 to 20 seconds at the beginning of every meeting to get that person you're sitting with to nod their head. Go like this. What do I mean by that? Let's say I'm building a low energy Bluetooth chip for luggage. 
okay, so I don't lose my luggage in the airport. So I could come to an investor, and again, to a journalist or anyone else I'm trying to pitch and say, we developed an internet of things, Bluetooth 5.0 chip level. Dude, you lost me. You completely lost me. I don't care about your technology. Why, why are we even here? Or you can say, you remember we were in, the, in the airport yesterday and you were afraid you were gonna lose your luggage? You guys are nodding your head. We cracked that. Literally, first 10 seconds of a meeting, talk about, you know how, as far as I'm concerned, every investor meeting should start with, you know how, talk to the person. What's the pain point that they feel? Not, don't talk about yourself, and definitely don't talk about your technology in the first 10 seconds of a meeting. Nobody cares, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I can't think of any winner today that won because of the technology. It's not about technology, right? It's about the pain point that you're actually solving. You know how you were in the, in the park yesterday and you were afraid you were gonna lose your daughter? We cracked that. That, as far as I'm concerned, should be the beginning of every meeting. Now, the home run and the nodding your head rule diff differs based on audience, which is probably the most important rule that anybody in all of your marketing needs to follow. <coughs> know your audience. What gets you to nod your head is not what gets you to nod your head. I'm speaking to a journalist, they're interested in knowing about you know, the traction of a company or strategic partnerships, or whatever they're interested in. If you're talking to an investor, you wanna convince them that you're a two percenter. So know, know their language and, and talk their language, right? The home run and the nodding your head rule, focus on your, and that also requires something that a lot of us entrepreneurs don't like to do, which is research, right? People, you have an idea, what do you wanna do? You wanna run with it. Sit down before this meeting, and again, we talked about this. Who is this person? What, what gets them excited, right? This is, this is like beyond crucial, and people say to me all the time, you've heard it, anybody who's ever met me, said, what's the first thing I should do? I have this idea. And I'm like, I don't want to say it because I feel bad for people when I say this, but like, your idea is worthless. Like, literally, my mom has ideas. Like, nobody cares about your idea, right? And I'm not even going to talk about the execution thing. Forget that. Everybody knows it's execution. But it's, who else is doing this? Who's doing this? Have they failed? Have they succeeded? Why have they failed? Why have they succeeded? What are you up against? And very, very important point. This is, and I have like a minute and a half left. So I'm trying to cover a lot of things here, but like, I have business cards here. I'll give them out. Anybody wants to reach out afterwards. But this is like, Crucial, crucial that you guys understand this. Crucial. When an investor asks, who are your competitors? They, the last thing they want to hear, and if you, this is the only thing you remember today, remember this, okay? The last thing they want to hear is, we have no competitors. Do not say that for the love of God, okay? As far as I'm concerned, when an investor says to you, who are your competitors, you go into your back pocket, you take out a landscape that you just created pre-meeting pre with 50 to 100 other competitors. Now, what's a competitor? Is a competitor someone that's doing the exact same thing as you? Absolutely not. Because if 100 other companies are doing the exact same thing as you, then you might be in trouble, right? But a competitor is someone that's going after the same target audience, with the same value proposition, the same pitch, and trying to get in the door. So you're not competing on product, you're competing on attention. So if I'm coming to the Washington Post, and I say to the Washington Post, use my SDK and your readers will stay on the page longer. Comes along Tabula, or Outbrain, and says, use my JavaScript and your readers will stay on the page longer. I am now competing head to head with them. But I have an SDK and they have a JavaScript, no one cares. No one cares about your technology. I, I know that sounds a little harsh, but that's the truth. Especially not in the beginning of a meeting. Talk to me about the pain point, know your competitors like the back of your hand, and on the contrary, when you come there with 100 other companies on the landscape, that to me says two things as an investor. Two things. One, there's a serious need for what you're doing. Two, you've come prepared. Now what's the next question that any you know, somewhat intelligent investor is gonna ask? Wait a second, there are 100 other companies trying to solve this? How are you gonna do it? You know, they're, they're, that's like as if to discourage you, like everyone else is trying, they've all failed, what are you gonna do? And the answer to that question is pretty straightforward. There are a lot of people trying to cure cancer. Should I not cure cancer? Like, they've all tried, they failed. I'm gonna execute my butt off, I'm gonna win, period. And you know, we, we all know this as entrepreneurs. Google wasn't first, Facebook wasn't first, Apple wasn't first, et cetera, et cetera. They just executed, right? Bottom line is, I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna give you my, my business cards. Happy to talk with anyone over a cup of coffee. You're treating, but uh, no, seriously, no, <laughs> no jokes. Bottom line is, Three rules, let's say. Two rules, home run. What is your home run? Before that meeting, know your home run. Come there, start with something that's focused on that home run, but on the pain point that you're solving. I sit with entrepreneurs, I'm like, why are you building a Yelp for dog owners? And they're like, I don't know. Why are you even doing this? What's the pain, right? And know your audience, know what gets them excited, and focus on that from beginning to end. Thank you guys very much. When Waz came to Israel, he gave me his metal business cards. Steve Wozniak, and I'm like, I gotta make metal business cards. So I have metal business cards here if anybody wants. I'll just pass them out. And again, feel free to like, 
email me. I don't know if it's enough for everyone, but enjoy. Okay. He really likes steak, if you want to uh, get his attention. <laughs> know your audience, my friend. Solid event from Ground Up Ventures. Stark is awesome. The insights that he just dropped, truly incredible. Now, going to Sea Tree, super hot company in the ag tech, agriculture tech space to meet with Barack, an entrepreneur I think I've known for probably a decade plus. This company is doing incredible things for farmers. More on that soon. Incredibly productive meeting at Sea Tree with this good looking guy, Barack Akhamov. How long do you don't want to, We know each other. We know each other for over a decade. Is that yeah. true? Over a decade. But now, the chairman of Sea Tree, one of the hottest companies in ag tech. You're going to hear a lot more about them. You already met them. You'll be hearing a lot more. And now we're going to Meat Kitchen. So stay. guest appearance on the vlog today, the man himself, Joseph Goldsmith, the man who makes the magic happen. Did you just come in from Renana? Uh, no, I have an apartment until I live now. Oh, that's right. You told me that. I forgot. I should listen to you more often. How's it going, dude? How's Israel, bro? Israel's awesome. You just and moved if here. Not, if you're watching this and you're not in Israel, you need to be in Israel. I love it. You don't pay me for PR. I love it, man. I should. I Make, you, you stealing my jokes now? A little bit. <laughs> well, I know you too well, so. Nice, you know. nice. Yeah. Probably Your jokes them. are now my jokes. By now, I feel like you've watched probably thousands of hours of footage. Yeah, to say the least. Like, you guys yeah. watch, you know, let's call it 10 to 20, 10 to 30 minutes of footage. I send this guy like 40 to 50 gigs of 4K footage every single day. The amount it's of hours. It's a lot. But it's all good. We're having a good time. We're having a good time. time. Amazing time. All right, man. Well, I'm going to run. I mean, how can I not have a good time? meeting these amazing startups and there you go CEOs and like you, that are you probably right know now. more about Israeli tech than anyone in the yeah, world probably you than me I love it. And, yeah, but it's I love it I mean I it's amazing it. I mean what's happening here is you know I, I'm crazy. gonna shoot myself on the foot and say something right now uh -oh. Do not, do not steal Joseph from me, but if you're looking for a video editor, I don't is, think anybody can steal. There is no one better, period, Thank full you. stop. I appreciate that. And you know, you, you, you obviously are very busy doing this, but I think you know, because of how you work and how much experience you have, you can do more. Thanks. And so if you're, I appreciate that. if you're a startup that's not looking to embrace video, then what's wrong with you? And if you are a startup that's looking to embrace video, hit up Joseph, what's your uh, Instagram and Twitter? My Instagram is joegold91. Uh, I'll put it right down there. There I'll you put go. It there in the Joseph, um, put it right there, yeah, Joseph. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll put my email below, so Beautiful. I don't have to do double, double the work. Hit up Joseph. Like but don't steal them from me. I'll kick your butt. Nah, right. no. I'm, I'm super late for my next for meeting. I'm always looking for work. You know, I mean, I edit your stuff. That's number one. But you know, I'm always looking for a new opportunity. If I drive you stuff. business, you better not ditch me, man. Uh, no, I know where you live. Not. You ready to drive me business? Have I ditched you? That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this is. The, well, they're gonna have a little meeting over here, Barack and Joseph. I'm out here because I'm super late. And we'll we'll do a longer. Now yeah. that you're here, we'll do long. Yeah. We'll do a long. We'll do like a whole vlog on your yeah. work. And That'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Let's do it. All right, man. I'm out here. Pretty incredible day today. Tomorrow, I have some outrageously amazing meetings lined up. Super duper excited about that. See you then.